Hi, Mark here for the Kensington Minute. He was born in 1915 to Yiddish-speaking immigrants who made New York their home. He joined the Communist Party of the United States, the CPUSA, after standing on soapboxes decrying capitalism. As a young man, he fought in Spain as a leader, a brave leader, in the Abraham Lincoln Brigade, and he shone with valor and competence. He also chummed around with Hemingway there. Well, kind of. Actually, the two didn't particularly like each other. Well, later he served in World War II and then protested the American war in Vietnam. Know who he was? Well, he was Milton Milt Wolf, who dropped out of high school to join the Civilian Conservation Corps, which turned him around. He acquired leadership skills and reigned in this rebellious nature. He joined the Young Communist League in April 1936 and in February 1937 left for Spain to fight fascism. Drawing from his earlier Civilian Conservation Corps experience, Wolf started out as a medic and his initial work consisted of carrying water and stretchers in the Washington Battalion. That would be merged later with the Abraham Lincoln Battalion into the Abraham Lincoln Brigade. In any case, he saw firsthand and bloody combat. According to one story, Wolf met Hemingway after seducing Hemingway's mistress. He supposedly, Hemingway did not mind this, but he was far more offended when he learned that Wolf had no idea who he was. Initially, Wolf wrote to a friend that Hemingway was, in his words, childish in many respects, and that he wanted to act and die like a martyr. Now, he summed up his first thoughts on Hemingway with this quip. So much for writers. I'd much rather read their works than be with them. Well, the two certainly knew each other. Wolf climbed up through the ranks of the Abraham Lincoln Brigade, and by January 1938, he was a captain. People commented that Wolf held the stature of Lincoln. He was tall, trim, fit, and he was a strong leader. Judge for yourself. When he led a very adept retreat after a bloody engagement with Franco's forces during the war, he showed a strong physical endurance and a prowess and psychological strength. Hemingway came on the sea again and again in his experience there, and he cast him as a hero in one of his Spanish portraits, and Robert Capra took pictures of him included in the article that Hemingway wrote. Now, the photo was shown in a Yiddish publication. His mother saw it and panicked. She had no idea that Milty was on the front lines. Well, Wolf led his men and women in the brigade until it disbanded. In December 1938, Wolf and the remainder of the brigade left Spain, but he continued to fight for the Republican cause in Spain when he was in the United States. He led protests and organized for relief to those who served in Spain. Then came World War II. Wolf officially enlisted in the Army in 1942, and he was sent to Burma after earning his airborne wings. The Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, sent him to Italy to organize communists to fight the fascists. Somewhat successful, and then he was sent to France. After the war, he remained prominent in the Veterans of the Abraham Lincoln Brigade, VALB, and he remained a prominent advocate for the Spanish Civil War veterans and the causes they espoused. He was also active in American civil rights, a leader in the old left. Now he was very much at home in the new left of the 1960s, the protests of the Vietnam War. And as an old man in the 1980s, he and the VALB sent ambulances to the Sandinistas in Central America. He wrote his memoirs, Member of the Working Class, in 2005. Three years later, he died at age 92. Read to the end. Okay, how do we judge Milton Wolf? He was a communist. Yes. All right. 
But like other communists and non-communists, he served bravely to fight fascists in Spain, and he was dashing and productive fighting Nazis later. Hemingway said that he, and I quote Hemingway, was as brave, as good as any soldier that commanded a battalion at Gettysburg. Now that's from Hemingway. By being a communist, he did not break a law. Was he a spy for the Soviets? Well, he certainly could have been, and I think it's likely that he was. He had secrets, certainly when he worked with the OSS, and he could have given them to the Soviets. Other communists of the OSS did, and we have Kensington minutes on the OSS spies, such as Duncan Lee. But I do not have any proof that Wolf betrayed secrets to the Soviets. So I will not claim that he was a traitor or a spy, but I do know this. He was one damn brave, competent, lucky man. He fought on the right side of morality in Spain and against the Germans. Okay, he was a communist, but boy, I sure would have liked to have met him, had a coffee or a few beers with this guy. Just a remarkable man. This Kensington Minute does not represent the official views of the United States government. Take our Kensington challenge. You may find a question or two about Spain out here.